might be able to make it. It's almost dark though. Well, here I am near Whitney, Ontario, and I am going to run the upper Madawaska River. This is my second try. After I picked up my new canoe from Novacraft, my new Novacraft Supernova, which is a solo whitewater boat. I drove past here and I was gonna do it and I ended up just turning around because the water level was way too high and I went back to my place in Magnetowan. Well, here we are the following week and we're running at about 125 CMS, so that's high water. So the river is flowing, it's a spring run. Uh, the water's warmed up a bit since then too and we got a sunny day as opposed to cold and rain. So I'm super excited to get out on the water and try this supernova. It's a very responsive boat. It feels quite tippy just to paddle, especially if you're sitting, but once you get into the rapids and you're kneeling, that tippiness just turns into incredible whitewater maneuverability. I can't wait to get out there and do my first real trip in this canoe. Uh, I got a spray deck for it too by Northwater. It's a little late in the day, it's almost noon. Um, so, you know, this is a four to a six hour paddle uh, to the next bridge at the Victoria Macaulay Lake Road. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to do it. If I get out of here by six, that's good. It should be a lot of fun. So I put these inflatable airbags at the bow and stern of my canoe and they're held in by this webbing and a strap. And that means that when I'm paddling the rapids, when my canoe fills up with water after going through some huge waves, well, it won't be sitting so low in the water because these airbags will help it float and still be controllable. And even more importantly, if I dump, these will help the canoe float higher in the water, which means it's a lot less likely to get wrapped around a boulder and pinned to a boulder. So when you're doing serious white water, definitely a good idea to have bowster and airbag. removable carrying yoke just because the seat's further forward so there wouldn't be room for me to sit and have a, a, a fixed carrying yoke. Pretty sweet. And then also up top here, this when you're lining or whatever, or transporting your boat on a vehicle, this cockpit cover covers the whole thing up which is great. Velcro it back like that. And that's where you sit in there. added little uh, wand that helps shed the water that would otherwise gather in there. And then if I run into any trouble, I can grab this, pull it out, and then swim to shore and I'll have the canoe on the end of a rope. So I have a nice uh, decent sized wool sock on. Then I have my Gore-Tex socks with my dry suit. And then over that I have neoprene socks and the wool sock helps keep you warm but it also prevents your toenails from wearing through the Gore-Tex sock too. These are Chodas. Um, these are super light, they drain and they have superior grip. As far as lightweight and a lot of protection when you're wading through the water, your toes and feet tend to get jammed in between rocks, it hurts. Um, that doesn't happen with these and uh, also I have something with a good amount of support, great to portage with and like I said they drain so the water doesn't just sit in here. Superior traction so yeah that's what I recommend. And then these are my thigh straps and these will uh, hold my, uh, my legs in the boat. Not so much so that I can't get out if I dump, but enough so that I can use the leverage of the resistance on the water as well as the pull of my thighs on the canoe uh, to help better control the boat and help brace and all that kind of stuff. So when I sit there, these go over my thighs like this. Well, next I gotta drag through 
all of that to get to the river because the river is right still into the trees so we are dealing with some high water here I'm officially about to jump into it. Uh, feeling a little nervous. Uh, this is definitely advanced level whitewater river, probably a class three plus, class four river, some class fives on it that I'll need to portage. And I'm out here by myself. It's high water, the water's cold, it's spring. So definitely, uh, you know, feeling what probably is a, a good amount of fear, which will hopefully make me act wiser out there and not any, run anything I shouldn't. So here we go. And we're off. And we are on our way. So, I got a guidebook for this river here. And, uh, Looks like I have uh, a couple challenging rapids that might not even be runnable. Not really sure what to expect. My guidebook says it shouldn't be run in an open canoe. Well, technically I don't have an open canoe, but this is a, just a spray deck. It's not a solid connected piece of plastic like a kayak. So it's not buoyant in and of itself. It just will shed some bigger waves. Uh, <clears throat> plus I'm out here alone and Maybe I'm just not that good, so make, make sure you have a, a good assessment of your own skill levels and abilities is a good idea, but yeah, a little bit of flat water paddling. I can already tell this canoe is super responsive just in that little bit of white water I did, um, but uh, yeah, feels feels a little tippier. I do have some weight in it, but yeah, it feels a little tippier when you're not in the rapids. Feels great to be on the water though. First trip of the year for me. My guidebook is calling this first rapid a class five <laughs> in high water. So it looks like I'll be portaging. I'm on the wrong side of the river. I can hear it just raging. So it looks like, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to be beginning this trip with a portage. Well, it looks like this lower part that I can see from here, I could have run, but up above that is the class five. So the guidebook is saying this is like a class four in high water, class three in medium water. I'd call, guidebooks are always a little careful, so I'd call this a class three, maybe a three plus, because it's technical. But that's, a, that's good, that's gonna give me a pretty good grasp on what the river's gonna look like compared to what the guidebook says, and just help me grade things. Pretty easy portage. A lot of the portages jump up to an old railway bed that runs along a good section of the upper Madawaska, so once you get to the railway, the old railway bed, it's pretty smooth sailing. Anyways, got to go back and get the canoe. that little rapid there just can get so much control so quickly with this boat well I probably could have just driven to there and put in there if I know I was gonna jump off with a portage but that's okay because uh, I get to see rapid lake and this part of the river coming up I have a long set of class twos 
followed by a class one and then a rapid called long rapid and it is aptly named it just goes on and on and on and it's a solid class three I think it's about 400 meters so super excited to run that i'm not gonna have to pick my boat up for a little while now Things are amping up a little bit. I was a uh, maybe almost three k flat water paddle, and now we're getting into some flat water. Kind of a little more than a class two, I'd say, just because of the uh, the really tight line and the irregularity. Now I'm getting used to this boat. It gets kind of pushed around more in rapids uh, compared to my Prospector, but it also goes where you tell it to better than my Prospector. And I can slow down a lot faster too. So that's two. I got three more class twos like that. like that rapid is coming up a lot faster than I thought and look there's like literally hardly anywhere to pull over because the river's up into the trees yeah not much not much space in between this rapid called bridge rapid and that rapid and I have to pull up into the forest here even to get out so that's that's not a good sign it means if I had to portage this rapid I'd have to bushwhack all my gear through this flooded timber even to get to the trail so fingers crossed but i'm gonna jump out and go have a look well unfortunately i think i'm gonna have to portage this just because you know what i don't have a lot of practice yet this year and it's a new canoe and this rapid is raging i mean i've run it before 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I just don't feel comfortable doing it, especially out here alone. Um, and just, you know, there's one big wave, but that there's too many areas where I think I would just swamp. I don't think I would make it because there's not enough room in here to avoid some of the big waves and the big curling waves. And, uh, you know, you got to hit some of those. And by the time I get to the end, I just don't know, even with back paddling, just because of the high water, those, those waves are kind of curling back on, on themselves. There's some souse holes in here. So it just looks like it might be a little, you know, maybe on my second, third trip of the year, I'd run it, but bummer. It's getting late too. So I gotta, I gotta move here, but this was the, this rapid was like pretty much the whole reason I was excited to come out and run this river. So it's kind of a bummer, but I scouted it for as much time as I possibly could. And I just feel like it's probably just a little too much for me out here today. Somehow I've screwed up and I still have like 13k to go and it's going to be dark in three hours. So obviously having to portage these last two rapids has cut into my time and I just started too late. But I'm still going to go for it. making some good time through this stretch that's pretty nice beautiful beautiful evening a little anxiety but uh, no point in worrying too much about that because it ain't gonna help me looks like we have another fun class 2 up here uh, these are called Russell Rapids so named because of the interesting rustling sound at the last of these rapids. So Russell Rapids is a stretch of five rapids in high water, all class two. So this is probably the last stretch. Looks challenging though. We got some tight, tight turns in here. Oh yeah, some interesting stuff going on here. Quite the uh, class two. Woo! 
Looks like we got some fun stuff coming up here. Two. Kerman shoot is coming up. That's a uh, class five waterfall. <sighs> there we go. There we go, you bastard. Well, I could have pulled out way closer to the waterfall, but because I don't know the river, there's no sign. There's no sign takeouts. It's probably just faster to pull over at the first safe spot I can find, grab my stuff and start portaging rather than scouting, then doubling back. Whew. But I ended up walking probably, oh, maybe like, up to a hundred yards further than necessary. Uh, I've decided that if it gets too dark to paddle, I'm gonna try to leave my stuff in the bush on this railway trestle and hike out back to my truck, drive around and pick it up drive on this trestle with my truck and pick my stuff up. But yeah, it could be like solid 10K hike in the dark. I'm not 100% sure where this railway trestle goes. I know this way it goes back to Whitney, but that's not even close to where my truck is. My truck's on the uh, Victoria Macaulay Lake Road up from the community of Madawaska. So, yeah, things are getting a little interesting. up into the trees and I don't know where the hell I can scout from. This is a raging class three, I gotta scout this. and pull out way above the rapid again here. I feel like every time I'm about to make it somewhere, something comes up. I'm just too afraid to go around that blind corner. Okay, solid uh, class three coming up. Give it a good scout. I'd like to have been able to scout maybe the bottom a little more. But we got a good 
solid idea of what I think I'm going to face in this rapid, kind of visualizing it. I think we'll be good to go. There's a ton of the coffin. If you hit that wrong, you will uh, for sure dump. Not too pretty, but I got the job done. I uh, I went to do a cross draw brace because I hit a curling wave. I didn't hit the tongue properly. Very hard to see from upriver, and uh, because of that, I over I over judged because I'm not so used to this canoe. So I braced too far and uh, almost went down. But we got more white water to come. Yeah. This is pretty relaxed cruising right here. These are almost just class one. cooking along here lots of current back to back class one and two rapids with good current in between and this is making me feel good i'm still gonna have uh i think two more port mandatory portages and maybe more though but this is giving me hope it's like we have something a little more squirrely up here this looks like a class three in a class two, I think.
Not a lot of time left before dark. Look at that sun, it's going down. Still have a ways to make it too. Oh, I'm just uh, approaching what's called Devil Cellar Rapids. I don't have the uh, notes for it in my book. It looks like I'm missing a page. But, uh, sorry, Devil's Elbow. Devil's Elbow, I believe. I've run it before, but the water wasn't nearly this high. So, and it's a class four. The top of it's a class two, and then you come down and then it's a short raging class four. And uh, right now, there's really no way to portage up to the trail. And so it looks like I'm gonna have to run the class two and try to eddy out right before the raging rapid. I don't see anywhere to take out here. This is sketchy. Probably shouldn't be doing this. I get myself over. It shows there being a point and the river going around the point. Well, now that point is an island and it shows a takeout uh, on the right, just kind of a drag over the, the point. It's a much trickier takeout, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this uh, class two, which is at the brink of Devil's Elbow Rapid, and then more or less just beach myself on shore before going over the waterfall. just avoided there. My map calls what's up here swift, but it looks raging, so I don't know, man. Water's definitely gotten higher with a few more tributaries entering the river, though. But uh, I should have one more portage around something called Little Niagara. Sounds really relaxing, eh? I might be able to make it. It's almost dark though. Oh man, this is gonna be tricky here. What the hell is this? the other end of the uh, portage trail around Little Niagara. Just gonna try to load up quick. Well, as you can see, it is almost dark. And I have a ways left to go, including a couple more rapids, uh, which is concerning. Um, I had to do a GoPro battery swap out. I thought it was a memory card, then the battery died. And it's like, at what point do I just stop filming stuff? 
and like save my own bacon. But uh, yeah, just doing my best to uh, bring everything to everybody here, even if it is a bit of a debacle today. I had my vehicle shuttled earlier today by Opiongo Outfitters. Uh, I drove with the guy there at Opiongo Outfitters, dropped my truck off at the end and left it there so it'll be there when I come to pick it up. So at least I know my truck's there and I know it's the only other bridge. So if I could just hit up these last couple of rapids, if they're nothing crazy, there's three more rapids, one's pretty long, but if I can hit them up and get through, I'm, anyways, I'm pretty sure that's the last portage. So if I can hit up those last three rapids while it's still light and paddle the rest in the dark, it's not a dangerous stretch of river with swift current and sweepers. So worst comes to worst if I paddle in the dark, but I still get there. Oh, shit. this rapid potentially is intense up here. Oh man, what a fun trip. First I was worried that the water is going to be too high and I wasn't going to be enjoying, I wasn't going to be able to enjoy too many of the rapids, but then sure enough, a lot of the easier rapids that would have been typically easy were a lot of fun with some really big waves. Got a chance to test out my new boat and I'm a lot more comfortable and familiar with it now than before heading out. Uh, just really impressed with the maneuverability of this canoe. And all in beautiful, beautiful uh, day on the river. And there it is, the bridge. My truck is just over there. It's safe to say I did it.